Do you recognize this woman? At the time of writing this, in the US, there are currently 21,729 open missing persons cases. There are 13,724 open cases of unclaimed persons. Currently, there are 14,053 cases of unidentified John, Jane, and baby does in the United States. This case follows an outlier doe, Julie Doe, who was discovered dead in Florida in 1988. Though she was discovered in Lake County, it's believed that she was killed in Claremont. To this day, she is still not being identified or claimed by anyone who may have known her. Unfortunately, Julie's family may well know who she is and where she is. However, as a transgender woman in the 80s, it is entirely possible that her family's bias led to them to allow her to get into the situation which caused her untimely death. Or perhaps they didn't know it was her due to authorities believing Julie to be a cisgender woman until 2015 when her DNA was found to contain XY chromosomes. Regardless, the events leading up to her death and probability of foul play is evident and despondent. One Sunday morning on September 25th in 1988, a man went out to search for cypress lumber in Lake County, Florida. The area is known to be extremely marshy and wooded. Upon his search, he was startled to discover an almost mummified body. A woman's body. The unidentified woman was so badly decomposed that she was almost skeletonized. Authorities at the scene were not able to approximate a cause of death due to the condition of her body. The area she was found in was determined not to be the area where the crime took place. Instead, it was considered to be the dump site. Authorities hypothesized that she had been dragged there from the road, meaning that she was possibly transported in a vehicle after her death. By the time of her discovery, Julie would have been dead for several months. The items found on her body were as follows. A long denim skirt, a blue-green tank top, and tights which were partly rolled down. It was thought at the time that this may be due to a sexual assault. Her skirt had also been rolled down. Julie's nails were long and manicured, and she had bleached her long brown hair to be a so-called Florida blonde. She had no forms of identification, nor any shoes, jewellery, or personal items. Without any way to positively identify Julie, her fingerprints were taken, and she was scheduled for an autopsy the next morning. The woman's remains were taken to the CA Pound Human Identification Laboratory, otherwise known as Cap Hill. This laboratory is part of the University of Florida's Department of Anthropology, and Julie's remains will be examined by Dr. William Maples, a world-renowned forensic anthropologist. Maples had conducted analyses of Spanish explorer Francisco Pizarro and the Elephant Man, also known as Joseph Merrick. The anthropologist determined that Julie was between 24 and 32 years old and stood around 5'10". Her height and build was noted as athletic and proportional and not too out of the ordinary. Maple found 250 cc silicone breast implants in Julie, which he also deemed to be proportional to her frame. Because of several pits and ridges along her pelvic bones, Maples believed that Julie had given birth more than once. Because of his scientific knowledge at the time, he would have contributed these pits and ridges to the softening of the pelvis due to hormonal changes during pregnancy. However, he was still unable to confirm a cause of death for Julie and ruled her death as undetermined. The case would continue to be considered a suspected homicide. Her body was found extremely close to the borders of Lake and Polk counties, meaning that she could be from either, or even further afield. Julie's DNA underwent genealogy testing, which determined that she was native to the southeast United States. She may well have been a Florida native. In fact, isotope testing, which was conducted on her body, confirmed that she lived in South Florida for a substantial amount of time. Unfortunately, due to a lack of ability to find a cause of death or evidence of her killer, Julie has been at the aforementioned capital since 1988. Her body has been kept reserved, unable to have any form of burial or send-off until somebody identifies or claims her or comes forward. The only true updates to Julie's case have been a re-examining of her body following the 2015 discovery of her assigned sex at birth. Dr. Michael Warren updated her case file to accredit the unusual pelvic dips to hormone replacement therapy which Julie would have undergone during her transition. It was after this revelation, too, that she received the nickname of Julie Doe. 
Students who had been examining her skeleton gave her the nickname Julie in reference to the LGBTQ plus film Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar, which came out in 1995. It was at this time, too, that Stephen Fusco made a new digital reconstruction of Julie's face, as she would have looked based on the shape of her skull as well as her genealogy. In early summer of 2018, it was decided that more tests were to be conducted on Julie. These would take place at the Florida Institute of Forensic Anthropology and Applied Science at the University of South Florida. Her skull was taken from Gainesville to Tampa, where the samples were taken for isotope analysis, which I previously stated proved that she was a South Florida native. Not much later, the DNA Doe Project took on Julie's case under the Trans Doe Task Force. They were able to effectively engage many communities for Julie's case, and one follower sent them a digital manipulation of Mr. Fusco's rendering of Julie's face to reflect what she would have looked like before her transition. This was done through FaceApp. Another follower sent their own digital rendering of what Julie may have looked like as a young person, also prior to her transition. There has been some controversy around this, however, in terms of finding Julie's identity, it is of the utmost importance that her looks pre-transition be shared as someone could recognise her from that period in her life. If she ran away to complete her gender reassignment and new life without telling anyone, she could be more easily identified through these images. Sometimes you have to embrace the past to find someone. Her DNA was uploaded to GEDmatch, a DNA matching site which could link her to a distant family member whose family tree could lead to the identifying of Julie. As it stands, there is almost no evidence leading to the capture of Julie's killer. There are many promising outlets such as DNA matching, but currently all we can do is share her story. For anyone in Florida or the surrounding areas, please share her image wherever you can. Maybe visit a grandparent and see if there's any family photos you can go through and perhaps match it to her. Any one of you could be the last piece of the puzzle to identify Julie and help to put her to rest. She could be your aunt, your cousin, your family friend. Ask about anyone who disappeared from South Florida in 1987 to 1988. Julie deserves to be identified and left to rest 34 years later. With so few trans elders in the LGBTQ plus community, it is extremely important to remember those who haven't made it to the age they should have been. Please make sure to check out the charity and petition in the description to ensure that more LGBTQ plus people live the lives they deserve, without them being ended by others' bigotry and hatred. Thanks for watching.